I have a feeling that learning how to plan your school year and your school days is one of the most popular topics. Um, and so I, I'm guessing you're gonna be ready to take notes and ready for ideas. And so before we even begin to talk about some simple ways that you can plan your homeschooling year, I want you to stop and remember that your house doesn't look like my house and that you don't have the same children and you don't have the same situations. So I wanna only give you principles for planning and not hard and fast rules. Okay, so you guys got that, you remember that, it's very important. So I wanna give you some simple techniques for planning. These are the planning techniques I go back to year after year. I've been using them pretty much the whole time I've been homeschooling. I've had times I didn't follow these and I've regretted it. So I just wanna keep everything simple for you. I don't want this to be something overwhelming. You are not a classroom teacher. You do not need to go out and buy one of those homeschooling planner books that looks exactly like an elementary school planning book. You don't need a seating chart and you don't have you know, eight subjects per day, five days per week, and plan it all out so that a substitute teacher can come in. And yeah, you might have needs for that. We actually have an article on our blog that talks about if you need a substitute teacher, but generally speaking, you are a mother, and this is a home, and planning can be a lot more simple than what it might look like in a store, okay? So here are some things you need to plan before the school year starts. First of all, what subjects do you want your children to learn over their entire academic career, okay? These are subjects that you know, you feel passionate about and these will vary greatly from house to house. Some things will be similar, so you probably want to teach them to read and you want to teach them to write and you want to teach them some math. Maybe you're interested in teaching them history and science, maybe not. Maybe you have um, an a huge urgency for them to learn every single book of the Bible and what is in it. I would agree with that one, but um, whatever it is, you and your husband, we've talked about this before, need to go and have a planning time and figure out what do you really want your kids to know? especially focus on those high school years. And I think you should consult people like the Homeschool Legal Defense Association so that you can find out what the laws in your state are. Make sure that you please Uncle Sam, if you know, that's what we call it in the United States. Make sure that you please the government is, you know, at least to the minimum of what they're asking. You might also want to think about um, supposing, I'm, I'm thinking your kids are preschoolers here and you're planning for college and you don't need to do this too much, okay? Spend like five minutes on this, not too much. But what are some general so topics that need to be learned in high school if your children were to go to college? And that might include algebra and geometry and a little bit of chemistry and physics, and maybe not. Maybe that is not important to you. But just generally speaking, long range, what are some topics that all students must study? Now we have available for you, I'm gonna put a link below the video. This is Homeschooling Torah's curriculum overview chart. And this is just one possible way that a student could go through kindergarten through 12th grade and cover a lot of topics. Now you'll notice that in our curriculum overview, they repeat some subjects multiple times. For instance, they're gonna repeat the Bible multiple times. They're gonna repeat through world history, geography, and American history twice. They're also going to tack on some government and economics. Now, that just makes sense to my mind because a third grader is not going to remember the same things about American history that an 11th grader would remember. So, um, but you can tweak it and give different assignments, okay? There are also basic reading and writing and arithmetic skills. Um, one of the things we probably don't have on that chart is your higher level math, which would include algebra one, algebra two, geometry, maybe maybe more. Maybe you want to have them learn calculus or trig. Maybe you would rather that they learn um, consumer math and how to manage a business and entrepreneurship. So those are things that you may not know. I remember being, and I think I've mentioned this before, when my oldest son was really small and he's crashing trucks into each other on the living room floor and he's like two weeks and, and I'm sitting here planning out every single year of his homeschooling. And I can tell you right now that plan did not happen, um, but it was still good for me to think about what subjects would we want to teach our children. And my husband and I definitely discussed these things and I knew what things were important to my husband and I knew what things were important to me. And, and so I definitely recommend that you plan those out. And so maybe in your teacher binder, 
you need a notebook, mom. You need a three ring notebook just for you. Maybe towards the back, you could have a little divider and behind that divider, you could have those long range plans. As you, as your children get closer to high school, you really do need to list out what are our Elliott Academy homeschooling requirements or high school requirements that they have to have finished before they can graduate from our high school. Um, though it's not fair to change it up on them as they're moving through. Um, you know, they're done with 11th grade and suddenly you come up with 10 more requirements. No, no school does that. So be thinking about that as your children near, you know, 10, 11, 12 years of age, start thinking what would be the requirements for them to graduate from our high school. Again, checking your local laws. Another thing you need to plan is your calendar for this school year. So we have calendars available for you to print at Homeschooling Torah, but you can probably find a calendar just about anywhere. You need to think about when you're gonna start the school year, when you're gonna end, and does your local school district or your state have a specific requirement? And I know some states do. They say you have to start by now and you have to be finished by now. I am blessed. I live in Michigan. We don't have those requirements, but I do understand that I want my children to progress about a grade level, depending if there's some special needs or special health concerns. But generally, that's my goal. Progress a grade level every calendar year. So there are so many ways to do this. <laughs> some of the possibilities you might want to start school um, you know, after Passover, or maybe you want to start school after Sukkot in the fall, or maybe you want to start just like everybody in your town at the end of August or first of September so that you can be on a sports team or be involved in a local co-op. Maybe um, you're expecting a baby in February. So you know that you want to take a good six, eight weeks right there and not do anything but be, be a mom. And so you're going to have to plan this big, big break right there, almost the size of a summer break. And so that means you're going to be doing school in the summertime. Um, most schools, most states require 180 days per school year. So 180 days, if there's five days in a week, you divide that out, that's 36 school weeks um, or nine months. Okay. Um, so that gives you some time off. You can, you know, the, the local school district is going to take off time for Easter and Christmas. You don't have to do that. Um, we at our house, we homeschool right through that season and we just pay no attention to the rest of the world. Um, unless, you know, you have a family member visiting and you might have some extra fun in the evening. We really just keep plowing through. That's fantastic school time. But we take off a good two to three weeks for Sukkot. And my husband is a, an elder at our local congregation and we spend a lot of time planning for Sukkot. So we take off. We also take off some time in the spring at Passover. And sometimes it's fun to take a vacation in the summertime when the weather is awesome in Michigan. So these are things that you need to consider as you look at your homeschooling year. You don't have to compare to anyone else. You don't have to get my permission. You don't have to get anyone's permission as long as you've fulfilled your state laws. That's really it. Um, if your mother-in-law doesn't like it, you know, you can think of something diplomatic to say, but, but as long as you reassure her that you really are teaching your children, I doubt they'll have too much of a problem. So one of the things you want to do is actually get a calendar and circle the times that you're going to have school or maybe X out the times that you're not and see, do you have space for there to be 180 days? put some cushion in. Unless you're just superior health, you're probably going to catch a cold once in a while or get a stomach flu that's going through the house. And so you, you want to have some cushion. So what we like to do is we like to have a firm start date and we have some firm dates that we are going to take off, maybe free feasts or family visiting or a special trip that we want to take. And then um, my end time is a flexible. So for my children, as they have some of those inevitable days when they just would rather go outside and play all day because the weather is that awesome, I have to remind them, well, we could do that, but I want you to keep in mind that that's, here's the calendar. It's going to tack on a day there. Now kids do, you know, we all have that immediate gratification desire. <laughs> so sometimes you just kind of have to put your foot down and say, nope, we're going to do school today and then you can have fun. But sometimes it is okay to push the school year off. Is there any reason why you can't do school and finish the year in August? You know, not necessarily. So think outside the box. You don't have to do it just like everyone else. But I do recommend that you plan it and have a, a general idea of when you're going to have school because you'll find that you stick to it and you're, you're more accountable. So that's an important thing to plan.
Um, let's talk about our daily routine because I want you to plan that out too. By that I mean um, you've chosen the subjects that you're basically going to, well, I didn't really talk about planning the subjects for this year. Um, I'm assuming that as you made that long-term plan, you kind of it helped you decide what you're going to do this year. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, on, on the Homeschooling Torah website, if you need help planning what subjects to do for your children this year, you want to go up to the top of the website and click on Roadmaps. And there are several different roadmaps there will help you get started and really think through which of these two subjects would be better for my child this year. And sometimes there's no right answer. You just pick one and do it. Um, and it, sometimes you want to ask your kids, you know, see what they think. And that's always fine. So let's go back to a routine for your day, planning out how the day is going to go. Um, I don't really want you to start with the routine. I really want you to go back and think, what do we want to accomplish with our lives? We, we talked in an earlier session about, you know, coming up with a purpose for our lives. And even you, mom, as you think about a routine, sometimes routines and schedules have a bad reputation. But I don't want you to think of it as like that. I want you to think, I'm only going to be alive, even if, you know, I, I have, by strength, I get 70 or 80 years, or wow, I get to be like Caleb and, in the Bible and live to be 120 years old. I am still going to have a limit on how long I live. And I need to think, what do I want to accomplish in this life? What is my reason for living? I don't want you to start with the routine and the schedule because you just feel a little bit constricted by the clock that's ticking and you feel like the schedule's keeping you from what you really wanted to do with your day. I didn't really want to do this. Yeah, but that's why I'm saying don't start there. Think about what you want to do with your life, your entire life. What are the things that are important to you to accomplish in your life? And put those in your schedule so that every day when you wake up, you're doing the things that you wanted to do. Um, now, Keep in mind that what you do in your schedule with your time needs to matter for eternity. And homeschooling your children does matter for eternity. And I'm not saying it's all fun and that's, you know, you're going to wake up and go, yay, we get to do more potty training or more phonics or more driver's ed today. No, but I think there is something about doing something that matters for eternity, knowing how important it is to teach your children that does kind of add some joy to the drudgery that sometimes happens with homeschooling. Coming up with what you want to do with your life helps you choose what goes into your day. You know, you're eating good food, nourishing food, because you want to live long time so that you can accomplish the things on your list. And, and, and you, or maybe what is important to you is that you have time to snuggle and read books or to get outside and spend time outside in creation. Well, put that on the list. That's important to you and it needs to go on your daily routine. You don't have to do anything I've mentioned in any session in this conference if it's not important to you and the, what the Father has called you to do. So that's really the most important part. Now, some things that we do every day just have to be done in order to survive, like eat and sleep. You know, you really do need to sleep and you should make it a priority. Um, but we should make those things habits so that those habits kind of become um, automated and we don't have to spend much time thinking about them. Um, circadian rhythms and cortisol and all these hormones that help us to stay on a schedule, um, they, they happen with routine and habit. So if, if you brush your teeth at the same time every day, you'll come to find that, first of all, you don't even think about it, you're just brushing your teeth. But second of all, it requires no stress from you because it's just what you always do at that time. One of the reasons we wanna have a routine and a schedule is to lower the stress in our lives. Um, when we just do it over and over every day, there's literally no stress there. And you know, you already know where the toothbrush is too, so you don't have to waste any time looking for that. I think one of the things that's hard for a homeschool family is when things are different and suddenly you can't find the keys and you can't find your shoes because you don't normally go somewhere. So have habits and routines and places for things so that you've lowered the stress and then life is more enjoyable. If life is crazy and hectic and stressful, it could be that you need to do some planning. And, and I know that may sound like it doesn't produce anything, it's not constructive, but planning can lower the stress because you can say this, I'm gonna do with my day what really matters. And I'm gonna do it in this order so that I have less stress. That, that's what it helps for me. 
I'm going to share some daily routine ideas with you. Um, again, go back to what I said at the beginning. These are just principles. It doesn't have to look like this at your house. It just has to look like something, all right? Planning it out and being purposeful and intentional about what you do. So at our house, um, you know, I'm not talking about with a nursing baby here. Um, it's been a little while since I've had a nursing baby. Hmm. If I had a nursing baby, I would probably pick what time I woke that baby up in the morning. I know that sounds crazy, but I might wake that baby up every morning at 6.30 or 7. And that way, um, I started the baby's day out. And it doesn't mean that the baby has to stick on a clock schedule all time. You know, but we do have a routine. We're gonna, I'm gonna nurse the baby, then I'm gonna change her diaper, then um, I'm, I might put her in new clothes for the day, and then we're gonna go do this, and we're gonna do that, um, you know, and just have a list. And then, oh, look at that, baby's getting tired, we're gonna have her lie down for a nap. And you get a sense after a while of about what time that little nap is. Um, often children that are you know several months old will take a nap in the morning and a nap in the afternoon and maybe a cat nap towards evening um, children that are um, as they get older they drop those naps and they're just gonna have a nap in the afternoon um, most days and then children as they get older <laughs> you know four or five years old at least it was for my kids you're gonna drop that afternoon nap those are really important to think about because as you're planning the rest of your routine and what's important to you you're gonna have to be practical about it too and stick it in and allow your children to get their naps that they need um, and it might and it might influence what topics you you teach your older children you know you might want to wait on some of those heavy algebra discussions until the little one's having a nap or you're holding them to nurse them so it's just practical to start with the little ones when you're coming up with your routine another practical place to start is when are you going to have your meals and at our house you know breakfast is supposed to be at a certain time i even have a timer on my phone because sometimes i'm answering emails or writing blog posts or doing things on my computer in the morning and i'm just in the middle of a thought and my alarm will go off and say have you had breakfast i'm like oh i gotta have breakfast okay so i stop and have breakfast and my kids are all awake by that time too and pretty much everybody's in the kitchen getting their breakfast going no I have older kids right now too I just want to mention that and remind you this is not going to be the same at your house I have a 13 year old and a 15 year old and an 18 year old at home and so it's just not going to look the same as it did when I had a two-year-old a four-year-old a baby a five a seven-year-old you know I had a lot of kids so um, it's it's changes by season but maybe you're gonna have your breakfast and then you need to think to yourself okay in your house would it be a good idea to do chores right after breakfast or should you go ahead and have your Bible time now before everyone leaves the table and I've done it both ways there's no right or wrong but you need to think that through those are two very important things that need to happen in your home you need to have Bible time with your children you do and you need to have chores you need to get the dishes done and or put in the dishwasher you need to change diapers you need to make beds you need to put dirty clothes away you need to start laundry those are important to think about and they need good spots to do them okay after that it starts to vary you know what you could put where I recommend if you have children that are learning to read or preschool students that you spend time with them pretty close to the next thing they need that one-on-one -on -one mom time and they're also going to get tired we've talked a lot about brain development and, and you know growing new neurons and I would recommend that you do that at the same time every day whether it's a preschool lesson or a phonics lesson with your young readers um, I would recommend doing it at the same time every day earlier in the day before they get too tired. Now, another option some moms do is wait until after that afternoon nap and children wake up and they have a special time then to do reading. Some moms do it both times and I can definitely see the advantage of teaching um, reading in the morning, maybe doing your worksheets then and then in the afternoon after nap time or even before nap time, except they're kind of tired then after nap time makes more sense and maybe you could sit and do the, the work in the reader and reading things from a book at that point on the couch. So those are some ideas. Again, you see I'm starting with the younger children and moving up. So maybe then after that is a good time to have start your together school and do your together school time. Um, to me, uh, 30 to 45 minutes is practical. Do I wanna stop then? No, I'm having so much fun, but it's practical. In fact, to me, a lot of times each of these subjects 
to last 30 minutes is a good target to aim for. And yes, some days you might go further and go a 45. Um, if your children are new to homeschooling or are young, I don't think that you should do it that long. I think you should cut it down to maybe 15, 20 minutes until they've um, grown their attention span. If you need to do 10 minutes, it's, it's not the time that you do it, but that you're consistent every day, okay? So cut it down. Don't do every assignment in the curriculum. Um, just choose a couple and keep your eye on the clock for a little bit. Um, don't wear them out, all right? Between subjects, it's time for a drink, it's time for a snack, it's time to run outside, um, take breaks, okay? Make sure that mom, you have not been way over ambitious and mom, you need a break too. I have found for me that one of my favorite things to do for a break is to go in my bedroom, shut the door for a couple minutes and just lay flat on my back with my eyes closed. Holy, that feels so good. And you know, set a timer, don't fall asleep. Like two minutes of just lying flat on my back, taking all the pressure off, feels so good. Anyway, we're back to out here. Other times I love to come out here and walk around to the garden in the middle of winter when it's snow on the ground, put the boots on, take a walk around, around the place. Um, you need the brightness of the, of the outside compared to being indoors all the time. It's so good for you. And it also helps wake you up. So our day might continue on like that. Um, we need to put math in there. Uh, math for us, it depends again on the ages of the children. When my children were more elementary school age, we, went, we might spend 45 minutes on math. 15 to 20 minutes of, of that time we're doing our together math drills and everyone's playing games or re reviewing our flashcards. Again, I wanna try to put that early enough in the daytime that they still have some brain cells left to be able to do it. And then we might spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes um, at the at the chalkboard or the whiteboard working out some of the problems for the day and I, the reason I said 45 minutes is because I had enough kids some of them were in one level of math and some were in another level and so I had to do that for both and so that works out if you don't have a, a, a spread of children and if you can get it done just make sure you have some time to review your math facts together we're going to talk more about math later and that you also have some time to help them get started on their workbooks help them get going and then it is okay to say Put the math books away. You're gonna continue that later on your own and this would be after lunch. That's one idea, just some ideas for you. I, this is definitely a subject though that you should put an end on it and get on to something more exciting or more different. Um, put some variety, just like in school. You did not stay on math for two or three hours. You would, there was a limit to how much time you spent and then you could come back to it as homework. And I really think that's a wise thing because you can burn out really fast, especially on the hard days. And if your children are struggling to get it all in in that amount of time, then just do less. Take two days to do every math worksheet or do more together and help them build up their muscles, help them build up their, their attention and their, their, um, their endurance and help them um, build up their handwriting skills. And, and it's no need to finish a book or finish a level take two years to do it. You know, you've done your 180 days of math each year. You do not have to get through it all. Slow down, mom, and, and be a little gentler on your kids. Don't burn out those neurons. As we've talked about in so many other sessions of this conference, your, your kids cannot do that. Neither would you be able to do that. Um, so um, history and science, reasonably in our house, we would spend 30 to 45 minutes on each of those subjects. Again, my children are older. And if my children were quite young, science I would only be doing once a week. I would wait until they're older. Um, and I just concentrate on this time and the stuff that we need to do together. The discussions that we've talked so much about. Those discussions are so important, but I don't necessarily stick around for them to make their maps or their notebooking pages or to write an essay. I figure that's homework and they can do that on their time later, okay? So we're, the, we're in the morning time, we're just having that together school time. Um, we need to have other kinds of language arts. So maybe we're doing grammar this year. We need to have that time. I can introduce the new grammar concept and they can start working on it, keeping an eye on the clock because I have other things I need to do with my day. And we have other subjects, we have other siblings. And so if there comes a point where I say, okay, grammar book away, we're gonna come back to that during homework time. Um, and usually that's, I'm thinking that's basically, I've gone through most of the subjects here. Sometimes it's really fun to then take a break, have some lunch, let everyone 
you know, calm down and get away from school for a little bit. And then maybe we might do some PE together outside or in the living room, having some fun, playing games together and getting that blood moving again. Get the little ones down for naps, maybe if you have little ones that need to have naps. Um, maybe at lunchtime you could read a chapter book if you didn't have time in together school time to do that this is a nice time to read a chapter book so those are some ideas for after lunch and then after lunch I also have my kids come back to the table and do their independent schoolwork or their homework so we always start with copy work they're reading they're they're copying through the Bible depending on their age and um, they always start with copy work now I will say in my home some of my teenagers now will get up in the morning and they like to do their copy work around breakfast time as long as they're at the table for together school for Bible and for you know those things that we do together I'm fine with them doing ch their copy work or any other homework anytime they want to if they're a morning person I think that's a fantastic thing but otherwise after lunch after we've done all of our together things now everyone's at the table doing their copy work they're doing any of the language arts math and notebooking pages writing assignments um, they're doing their independent Bible reading because all of my children from about third grade or so when they can read independently they are reading the Bible through every day and they have a homework assignment they all have a chapter book which is why it's so important to share those good books with other people because um, you, you want your children to be reading. So they have to read a chapter book. As my kids get into high school, they're also reading a nonfiction book that will help them with the life skills that they need. So that takes them a little while, but that's not me. I'm not doing all of that with them. I usually am sitting at my desk working on homeschooling Torah, um, answering emails, writing curriculum, especially in the afternoon I'm writing curriculum but I'm only about three feet away from my 15 year old. So if she has a question about something, I'm right there. So that works well for us. Again, that may not be the schedule that you want, but planning it out is so important. If you're just starting as a homeschooler, keep it simple. Get an idea of what the general subjects you wanna do every day are and about the general idea of when you'd wanna start them and stop them, especially putting limits on things if you tend to go crazy. Um, and especially the first couple weeks of school, try to stick to that schedule. Doesn't matter how far you get through the subject, put it away when the clock says it's time to put it away and just pick up there the next day. The clock can be your friend because it can say, you know, we're gonna get on a routine. And the clock says, um, you know what, we were a little overwhelmed by this. We didn't even close to get done everything that we thought we were gonna get done. But the clock says we better get going on math now. So we're gonna put it away and change subjects. Don't be frustrated by that. Realize that what you're doing is setting up habits for yourself. You're getting your body used to being on that schedule. And that's a lot of the reason we don't like schedules is because we can't keep to them. So let the clock be your friend. If you have to set a timer with maybe a couple minute warning that you know, you've got three minutes left on, on history, you're gonna wrap it up, okay? Um, help them grow their attention span and, and maybe sh limit the, the amount of time you're gonna spend on a subject to a smaller amount the first couple weeks. Even though you know eventually you wanna get to 30 or 45 minutes for a subject, maybe you're gonna keep it to 15 and just go through the order of the day and get used to just doing school. This is really important for those that are new to homeschooling. It's more about the habits that you're setting than the actual academics that you're learning. You're gonna have time for that later. Um, I would also recommend that you put a, a written schedule on the wall. I wouldn't put times on it. Mom, that's for you to know. And maybe some of your older kids, you know, some, some times like we're gonna have lunch at this time and we're gonna have breakfast at this time. But you would wanna put the order of things. So for instance, if you're gonna start with breakfast and then Bible and then chores, you're gonna write that up there so that they have an, a general idea of what's next. And it just kinda calms everybody down. They're not like, what is going on in my life? But okay. I guess we're doing Bible right now and then we're going to do chores and then and you'll find there's less grumbling and more everyone participating and knowing you know what to expect and it also mom keeps you accountable because sometimes as moms it gets hard and we want to quit and so we we look up there at the wall and it says we still have to do history science language arts and PE oh my word I do not want to do PE today of all the things all right we'll just really quick go through history science and, and language arts and then we'll be done and the kids are like, but mom, the wall says we're gonna do PE. And you're like, the wall says we have to do PE. And it can boss you around and hold you accountable. And sometimes, especially we moms need that. All right, lastly, um, I wanted to mention my Sunday morning planning routine. 
On Sunday mornings, I have a special time. We don't do school at our house on Sunday morning, so this is a principle. You could do this on Saturday night after Sabbath. You could do this any time that works for you, but I like my Sunday mornings, and so that's what I'm gonna call it. Um, I have four P's that I do every Sunday morning, and that is pray, plan, print, and put away, okay? Starting with prayer. I have some goals for my life. I have things that I want to accomplish. Those are things that I have written down. I have them in my planner. That's another P. And in my planner, I have written down verses as to why those things are important to me. And every Sunday morning, I go through those again. And I remember, Anne, this is why you're alive. This is why, um, this is the important thing that the Father has placed on my heart and on my husband's heart for us to do as a family. For, that this is why, this is the verse that, that reminds me of why it's important. And I, I read those verses and I pray and I say, Father, please help me to hold to the plans that you have for my life. I know that they're your plans and I know, Father, that there are things that could come up this week that are unexpected that I did not want to have happen. And Father, I need to be able to trust you when you bring those interruptions into my life. But Father, if it be your will, please help me to stick to my intentions, you know, and not to let my own distractions and my own lusts sidetrack me from the plans you have for my life. And so I, and I commit that. And so I, I then pray for each child. I pray for my husband. I pray for needs that we might have. And that's a really special time. And yeah, I, I, the next thing I do is plan. I have a planner and, and I honestly get out your teacher notebook, your three ring binder and look over the week. It's really important for practical things like science. Are you gonna need a two liter bottle so that you can do the science experiment that you have this week? Um, or maybe you need a flashlight and two um, AA batteries and you're like, okay, I'm gonna have to have those. In fact, you might even wanna look ahead two weeks in science because you might have to get to the store and put them on the grocery list and so on. But for other reasons, you might remember that you had to return a library book coming up. And so you might want to read an extra chapter on this book because you're, you're just a touch behind, but it's due on Friday. Um, just things like that. Write down what you have going on. Did, you, did one of your kids have the flu last week and you got behind in a subject, but everybody else would kept going? How are you going to catch that student up? Or what are you going to change to your schedule? It doesn't have to be a catch up. It's homeschooling. Um, but you need to plan it. Okay, just because we're homeschoolers doesn't mean we wing it. Plan it out on that Sunday morning. And then you're going to go to the Homeschooling Torah website and you're going to print whatever you need for that week. Or maybe there are other things that you want to print. Um, and I, I have that print in there. You can print by the month. You could print by the year. I really don't recommend it. I really recommend that you stick to the weeks. But it's up to you. Maybe so once a month you have to print. But whatever it is for your home and what you've decided works for you, Go get that done on Sunday. Don't wait to Monday morning. Do it ahead of time. Get the print button. Now what I do is I sit at my computer or I'll get on my phone and, and do it from there by sharing to my printer, you know, through the Bluetooth. But I, I really like going to the computer. It's a little bit easier for me to see the website. And I just go across the, the, the website. I start with Bible and then I do history and then I do science and language arts and math and so on. And I just go across the subjects in order and I print what we need. Did you know that you can favorite the subjects on the Homeschooling Tour website so that you can go straight to them? And here you can go right to the favorites and just go right down the list. That's another way to do it. So I print out what I need in every single area. And the next, the last P is put, put it away. So for me, I'm delegating this part to my kids. I, and if your kids are old enough to do this, I think that's wise. So you delegate them to them. You say, kids, a whole bunch of stuff just came off the printer. I want you to sort it into piles. I want there to be a mommy pile for the teacher's guides. I want there to be a pile for each kid. And there's the three hole punch. I want you to show them how to do it. Show them how to line up the papers so that the, you know, the, the paper goes to the bottom of the three hole punch and everything's lined up pretty. And then tell them to go get their, t their school notebooks their own binders and to put the pages where they belong. It might be hard the first couple times you've done this, a little bit of an activity for sure, teaching everyone what to do and where to put their papers, making sure they do it right then and don't wait, or you have math papers wandering around the house and not have them when you need them tomorrow. But after a few weeks of doing this, your kids won't need you anymore. And they're gonna to continue to have this, this subject and it will help you so much. So you have pray, plan, print, and put away. Um, then you can enjoy your day. <laughs>
So that's a, just a general idea of how I do planning at my house. Again, these are principles. They're things that you may do different, but I hope you'll take the principles and um, feel confident about planning your homeschooling year.